Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. This is part two of the clown tutorial using Airshot stencils. You can see these are the templates that I use to create this particular clown artwork on a canvas. And just another quick look at the completed artwork. So this will be finished off in part three. Let's get into part two now to further render the artwork. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add some shading into the hair as well as the eyes. Uh, to shade those areas, I'm gonna use moss green. So you can see from our light source that it's at the top right from this uh, highlight on the nose. So I'm gonna run some shading on the bottom of the eyes. Also want to darken up just underneath. And with the hair, Kind of aiming for the lower section while I've got that template still on there. Same here. Sort of darken it off a little bit and then once I remove the temp template I'll do some proper shading. We'll run a couple of little fine strands in there as well. Now in order to shade the collar and the nose, I'm gonna use violet. Starting to add those ruffles in. So you can see the highlights on the top part of the ruffle and then on the inside where it dips back in uh, to give that 3D appearance, that's where the shadow will be. Go ahead and, and hit those and I'm just freehanding in the approximate shape of them. So I do hope that you're enjoying watching this video so far. If you are, feel free to give it the thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I do weekly videos, and make sure you tap on that bell icon. That will notify you every time I put out new content. And for anyone that's interested in any of the products that I'm using in this video, then jump in the description below. I'll have some links in there so that you can go check them out. These ones are going to go darker along here because our light source is still on that edge. Uh, the highlight still catches on that top section, but I um, can tweak that as I go on. I'm also going to now uh, bring in the ruffled area coming off that. So I'll go grab some freehand shields for that. It's pretty good. So I'm going to use the Fire Tool Mini Set for this. And it's going to... Add a bit of an edge on there. That's the impression of the ruffle. Kind of just making this up as I go, following obviously what's 
provided from the template, but again, they're freehand templates, meaning that a lot of it you um, you can interpret and add your own artistic flair to it. So obviously going to refine all this as I go on, just kind of getting in my basics so I know where I'm going with it. I might just subtly spray these in. I'm also going to use the violet to shade in the lip area because violet on top of the red is a perfect shadow tone. Give that a bit of a 3D appearance. Too worried at this stage about a little bit of overspray on the teeth, it can come back and fix that up. Violet's also really good to add into uh, darker colours to kind of neutralise them and take the edge off. Alright, now I'm going to render the nose. Just make that nose look three-dimensional. And coming in with the template, we'll see if we've got a good curve there. Actually, I might get a circle template for that. So circle template doesn't really fit in as well as I'd like it to. Although, let me have a look. You know what? I can still go with that. I will go with that and we'll just fix up with some red. So I'm going to have to spray this bit of white in red. Actually I might do that first. Come in with the, the red. I'm going to fix up this little piece as well. Like I'm just going to block this out a bit so that it's not as harsh of a highlight because I can add my own one on top of it and also bring that red out here. I'm going to do the same while that dries down here with this highlight. You can spray a little bit of red from a distance over that white. It's going to give me the gum look. So go a little bit pink. See, it's taking a little while to cover, but that's all right. Just want to knock the edge off. It doesn't have to be completely gone. Even in here, this will all blend in. Let that dry off a bit. Bring some red back into the lips where that white overspray is hit. Another coat on here. Now leave the air on, let that dry off. All this overspray and everything, I'm going to fix all that as I go on. You need this to dry well enough so that I can lay the template on there and put some of the violet shading. Okay, coming back in with that violet now. So now that the red's dry, use this circle template and you can see I've got enough space now with the red that I can hold the template on there and spray around the nose. Actually what we will do instead 
is instead of using violet, I'm going to use white to spray around that nose because then that will blend into the makeup rather than having to go white back over the violet again. Okay, so grabbing that circle template, put that into place like so and spray around the edge. Blend that out, we're gonna make that all make up anyway. So the white's fine on top of there, that's why I thought we'll go white instead of the violet. Kind of saves us a step. So whenever, whenever you're doing your artwork, you've got to kind of think about the steps that you need to take, what colours you need to use, and the easiest way to run through those steps so that you can use those colours for numerous applications. Like I used the violet for the ruffles and to shade the, uh, the ruffles, I also used that on the, um, on the nose. Okay, so that's nice and sharp. It'll fix up around the other end. Put that there, line it back up, like so, and we want to clean up like that. Now I'm not going to work my way right around because I obviously want to shadow underneath that section. Just going to hit that lower part, but in here. I'm going to get my violet again. Alright, so my violet's going to be underneath here and that'll pick up that edge and we'll come back to the white. Okay, so now we'll run that shadow underneath. And it's going to be heavier on the left. And then we'll do some freehand as well. That's giving us a bit of a, an idea of where we're going. So now I'm gonna come in and start to freehand with the white. Okay, so before I go into the white, I wanna dirty up the teeth a bit. So I'm gonna use the Dermatitis Tan. What I'll do is I'll spray a flat tone of this on there and then I'll, um, when I'm doing the white, I'll add my highlights on top of it. Flat tone with that Dermatitis Tan. This will dirty up his teeth. Obviously don't want them bright white. This is an evil clown. While I've got this color, I'm just going to add a few little highlights on top of that flesh section. And also in the corner of the eyes. And I'll do a little bit around the lower layer of skin around the eye there. So it looks like the makeup sort of hasn't totally gone right up to that section. I'll blend that out a bit. Okay, so now we can start with our white. I'm going to unmask it now. So you can leave this on if you're more comfortable with the template remaining on the surface, but I want to start to sort of freehand back into the background a little bit. Okay, so we get a better understanding now of how it's looking, how we're going with it. Now I'm going to, to pull out some of this detail in the makeup.
going to grab my texture templates to build some texture within the makeup so it doesn't look totally smooth. Starting with this Texture 2 by Gerald Mendez. This is an art tool template. And then I've got some other ones that I'll switch to. So at the moment I'm letting the template sit reasonably flat. Obviously if you move it around when you spray through it you get different effects but right now I want to get that real broken up makeup look as my base. And then I'm going to come in and add some more. Adding texture really helps to take your artwork to another level like just makes it a little bit more detailed. So I highly recommend it. And these, um, there's so many good texture templates available. All right, while I've got this going down in that lower section, I wanna to start to pull out some of the chin. Kind of mapping it in and then I'll freehand a little bit from there as well. So brightening up 
some of these areas, give that a more three-dimensional effect. So just allowing that white to really build. Obviously a bit more highlight on this edge since our light source is up there. You can obviously switch that around if you like. I kind of just followed what was on the template. So you'll notice how I kind of spray over certain areas to start to build the white. Then I'll move on to another spot, letting that dry off a bit. And then I work back on top and that's giving me a brighter white. Don't try to saturate it all in one hit. It will go brighter as you give it more and more coats. And allowing it to cross link and dry kind of creates a bit of a barrier for the next coat of white to sit on. Especially when you're working on canvas. And I haven't done anything to this canvas as far as sealing it or um, applying any primer or anything like that. So this is just airbrush paint straight on, obviously straight on top of a trident black as my base. Do some highlights here, start to pull out some of these areas in the eye. So you can see my trigger fingers constantly moving back and forth, just gradually building. I'm going to add some shadows as well, so then I can, if I need to, come back in and bright, brighten up some of the highlights. When you get a real defined edge, then just grab your template again. Still got to add in the pupils, but I'm just going to brighten up a little bit of that. Might actually add in a bit of fluoro green to really make that those eyes pop. Maybe I just won't put pupils in at all, make them glowing. Looks 
pretty cool, pretty mean. A few little strands in the hair. This is why I wanted to remove that background mask, because now I can merge some of that hair into those background area, but I really should clean that up first, which I might do with the black, just to clean up some of these edges. But the hair actually is not too bad. I might just leave that, make it look a bit more natural. Bring some of this makeup back into where I shaded earlier with that purple. So going over that purple overspray to eliminate that. Same here. a white highlight on the lips. And some bright highlights on the teeth. This is why I like using that uh, dermatitis color, that sort of tan because white tends to stand up and be a lot more obvious on a darker colour. If this was a real light flesh tone, you wouldn't get this sort of contrast. It's still going to add shading to these teeth as well. I'm not coating the tooth entirely with the highlight, I'm just sort of picking out some of those bright spots.
So using that white just starting to really shape the ruffled collar. Okay, so I'm going to use some fluoro green, brighten up in the eyes. Again, just building up my coats. Now I'm going to spray a bit of uh, glow around the eye. And a little bit onto the makeup. Just to suggest that, you know, those eyes are really glowing and Coming to life. Coat them a little bit more. There's a little bit of that glow coming up here as well. On the lower edge of that brow. And use it to brighten up the hair as well. So I think using um, fluoros to brighten up certain colours works really well. Just keep in mind fluoros have a tendency to fade. So if you are going to use fluoros on an automotive application, you need to keep that in mind. And um, these fluoros, these are Trident fluoros, they do activate under black light, which is pretty cool. But I like just um, utilizing them just to give the color a little bit of that punch. Just brightens it up really quick and easy. And then obviously gonna shade back over that anyway, but it's starting to take shape now. Okay, so now I wanna sharpen up, clean up some of this overspray around the clown. So I'm gonna go back to my positive template. 
Just make sure it's on the right way. And I'm not going to necessarily go around all of the hair again. I just want to clean up around that head. So just holding that into place. Carefully spray around, blending that back out. Just having a look, readjusting. So we've missed a little bit there. We can clean that up a bit better. Okay, so now we have the nice sharp edge around the head. Clean up any of the other areas. Well, I've got the black. So I'm using the same black, obviously, that I used for the background. Again, I'm not going to do the hair, I'm going to leave that, I'll show you why in a minute. Clean up around the whole ruffled collar. Other side. Last little bit. Might actually use one of my templates for this because I've already slightly changed the shape. I want to just come in like that. Okay, now using the black, I'm going to just run back into the hair. Only on the tips, just to get rid of those masking edges. It will eliminate some of those white highlights, but I can put them back in. I just really want to get rid of these, those real sharp defined edges that you get from masking kind of a balance like around here that looks fine but I don't want them in the hair. I'm going to come in and shade anyway on top of this hair. That'll be the next thing we do. But while I've got the black I can just merge that hair into the background and it will provide a better transition rather than that harshness which makes that those strands look a bit fake. Okay, so I've got everything around the clown done. So now we can start shading the actual clown. So that's where we're going to leave it for part two of this tutorial. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out part three and take a look at some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And as always, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.